Oh, I gotta bring y'all in for this one. Holy crap. Wow, I should have been using that one from the get-go. I'm trying to turn my back to the wind. It's really windy today. I've got a project in the garage that I'm doing resin on. I'm having to wait for it to dry so I can't do any other work in the garage because it'll start dust and getting my resin. So I figured I'd start on another project. Now this trailer came from one of my neighbors. It had just been sitting out on their property. They were just gonna metal scrap it. And if y'all been following me for a while, you know I like to take old junk that's getting tossed out and see if I can't turn it into something cool and useful and flip it for a profit. But I bet in its day it was pretty cool with all the flame decals and stuff on it. And I'm assuming it was used for dirt bikes with all the stickers that are on it. It's got Kawasaki stickers and stuff. So I bet somebody used it for their dirt bikes. But it's pretty beat up, it's pretty rough looking, but it's still all there and it's still very solid. Now I have a bunch of heavy duty expanded metal left over from other projects. I think I'm gonna go through and put it between these gaps. So if you're up here on the bike or you're walking to push the bike up here, you've got a nice solid surface to stand on instead of having to do like I'm doing right now and walk in between the framing. Now I also ordered a new wiring harness for this, ordered some lights, and I found some old like Cadillac style looking tail lights. See if I can't build something to put those on here and make it look real cool. Both of these are spares. They're different kinds of spares, different tires off of different vehicles. I'm gonna see if I can't find some like rat rod looking wheels to slap on here. And I'm gonna take my contour was SET tool that I got from Eastwood. I'm gonna take that through here, knock as much of the rust off as I can, get it nice and cleaned up. Now, once we get this thing all cleaned up, I'm gonna be using, I call it Rust Stop, it's from Eastwood. As soon as it gets here, I'll post up a picture right here what the technical name is or what they call it. But pretty much, it's just a shell that goes over rusted metal that stops the rust in its tracks and won't continue growing or come back through the paint. They use it for a lot of uh, old classic car frames and stuff. So we're going to be coating the entire piece in that. But I think it's really cool. It's definitely got some age on it. It definitely had some good times and good memories with it. I hate to see it just go to a scrapyard and get crushed for metal. So we're going to see if we can't give this thing a second life and make a little bit of profit off of doing so. Now I got my gloves from Eastwood too. Man, these things are awesome. Got a lot of protection on them too. And like I said before, I'm going to be using the Eastwood Contour SCT with the steel wire brush. This should make pretty light work of it and be a pretty good workout for me. I think got a little bit of weight to it, but man, it does, it takes it off. Oh yeah, that's gonna make light work of it. Now there's a lot of dents and stuff where it drops down. That's where you see me pressing it a little bit harder and getting it at kind of an angle to get in those. Now they do sell these. They're only like an inch or two inches wide. That'd be great right now to get into all these sharp spots, but we're gonna work with what we got. Whew, there's a workout, but man, it's taking it down quick. All right, for fun, I'm gonna switch to this abrasive drum, see how it does. Oh, yeah. Oh, I gotta bring y'all in for this one, holy crap. Wow, I should have been using that one from the get-go. Watch this, holy crap. All right, I'm about to start cutting some of this metal off that I'm not gonna be using anymore. I know that one's holding the fender, but I'm gonna cut it anyway. I may just go ahead and just pop the fenders off and then uh, make them the way I want them and then weld them back on. There we go, fenders off. Let's take them inside where we can actually see and get to work on these. All right, ignore my messy background. I've got several projects going at the exact same time while one's drying. Of course, we're working on other ones. So we're back to working on the trailer right now. So I'm gonna attempt to make some funky tail lights for this thing. I found these, uh, they kind of look like old school Cadillac tail lights. And then I just got these LED trailer lights that I'm going to try to see if I can't figure out a way to use those. If I can't, then I'll just put a regular bulb in but I'm gonna try to put those inside for the actual light. We'll see how that works. If not, like I said, I'll just get a regular trailer bulb. Kind of a old school Cadillac tail light. I think these are made to upgrade on Harleys or something. I just found them on Amazon. So I may just use the lens or I may use the lens with the trim ring on it or I may even paint the trim ring. Don't really have a plan, just have an idea. 
see how we can make it work. I don't know how well the camera picks that up, but those are going to be cool. I still got to find some longer bolts to put in the top, get that all figured out. I've got nuts on the back now. I'm probably just going to tack the nuts in place. That way, if they ever go to change out the bulbs, they're not having the nuts fall off the backside. But so anyway, so it's been a little bit trying to figure out how to make it work. That's cool. So up to this point, I haven't spent any money on this trailer besides for buying those new tail lights y'all saw me install. Everything else I've used on this trailer is stuff I've just had hoarded laying around. Now I did decide to go ahead and spend some money on it. Got a complete new wiring harness for our new tail lights. Got new safety chains. And I went ahead and got a new coupler. Brand new shiny coupler on there with brand new shiny chains with a brand new wiring harness. It's just gonna add a whole lot more appeal to this trailer. That should profit me a whole lot more than the $50 I invested. Now here in Texas, you're supposed to have dual chains and they're supposed to crisscross underneath the hitch. That way if the hitch ever comes off the ball, it falls onto the crisscross chains and keeps it just from completely digging into the ground as you're going down the highway. Now it's time to give this thing a little bit of muffler. All right, now for the fun part. We're about to coat this entire trailer in Eastwood's Rust Encapsulator. Now, I've used Pour 15 in the past. Let me tell you, this stuff puts Pour 15 to shame. So if you're coating a classic car frame or even a newer car frame, if you're somewhere that has a lot of salt, this stuff has a thousand hours of salt protection. And like we're doing today, this thing's gonna be amazing on this old trailer. We didn't have to sandblast it down, get rid of every bit of rust to be able to put paint on it. This is gonna stop it in its tracks. It's gonna be great for what this trailer is. It's not a show trailer. It's just something that was gonna get scrapped. We're giving it a new life, gonna make it usable again for somebody. This is also a great option for metal patio furniture. You got some metal patio furniture, it's starting to pick up a little bit of spot rust. You wanna paint it, put a coating of this on it first. It'll stop that rust in its tracks, give you a nice, hard, durable coating. And then you can paint over the top of this whatever color you want your metal patio furniture. Now I'm sure there's gonna be somebody on there watching it going, hmm, I wonder how that would work on my smoker and my barbecue grill. Unfortunately, this stuff is only rated up to 350 degrees, so this would not be ideal for one of those applications. But for everything else that's gonna stay under 350 degrees, this stuff is amazing. Now, if I was doing a classic car frame today, I wouldn't opt for the aerosol. I would actually buy a quart of it, take a paintbrush, and I'd paint it on real thick and heavy. But with us doing this trailer and having all this expanded metal and all these small parts and all these tiny crevices we have to get into, it'd be really hard to get it in there with a paintbrush. And then as you are painting that expanded metal, it's gonna be flinging paint everywhere. You're gonna have a ton of drips because it's gonna hang up in between every one of those grooves. We're not messing with that today. We're just gonna go straight to the aerosol, make life easy, put a nice coat on there, maybe two coats, should be all good. Now, even though this is the aerosol version, it still applies very thick. It's gonna be a lot thicker than the aerosol paints that you're used to using. And it's so thick that it potentially can clog up the nozzle on here. So they drop a second nozzle in the cap for you, just in case that happens. Eastwood's obviously used to dealing with people like me that stop in the middle of painting and then go try to paint again, their nozzles all clogged up. They got it taken care of. <laughs> Good thing in Eastwood. Now again, this stuff is very thick. It's not like your normal spray paint. It's gonna be real thick and probably wanna clog up. So spend the time, shake it up really good. 
go, go.